Hello and welcome back to the Flower Gold Wizard Channel. I'm Jason. That's Rigby. We're part-time gold prospectors based in Wisconsin. And today, we're going to go down to the beach and see if we can't find a big pile of gold. That's right, it's beach season. As you can see, there's just a little bit of snow left. We'll punch our way through that and get down to the water. It's a little bit windy down there today, so I hope you guys will be able to hear us. But we're going to have fun nonetheless. I got some new equipment today we're going to try out that I've been dying to get down there and use. So let's get after it. Back in a bit. And here she is. Ooh, just like I remembered it. A lot of water, a lot of sand. <laughs> but it really, it's going to be a really nice day out other than perhaps the wind. So all we got to do now is pick which way to go and try to find some black sand deposits because that's where the gold is going to coagulate with. It's kind of in the same weight realm and it's one of the last things left behind during erosion. Now during the during the winter, the ice up here starts to shove and move up onto the beach. And it just piles up and piles up just like a bulldozer. It blows all kinds of sand and rocks and eventually gold deposits all the way up. It just starts piling it up in here. And then that ice, all those icebergs melt and it leaves all the rocks and sand and whatnot left behind. Similar to these glasses right here. <laughs> There's some garbage laying around. Oh well, I'll grab them. But anyway, hopefully they left us a nice pile of black sand and gold down that away somewhere. I worked this area before way, way, way down there. But I have since lightened my load. I have everything I need to do to beat a productive beach miner in my backpack and I'll take a look at that in a little bit. So let's start hiking down the beach and see if we can't find something good. Well, Rigby did it again. He nailed it. And we walked almost a darn mile <laughs> down that way and I didn't spot anything. As a matter of fact, I dropped my gear back there a little ways because I was sick of carrying it around and not seeing nothing. And Rigby ran up ahead and he sat. He sat right here. There's his tracks. He just sat right there and waited for me. So I caught up to him and I noticed this black sand deposit and it's the first one that I saw the whole time we were here so far. So I took a little sample out of right there with my scoop. There's my scoop for size reference. That's right, my scoop. <laughs> and I panned it out. Well, look what we got here. There's 15 pieces of gold in that pan right there. And they're not bad size for beach gold either. That is absolutely incredible. I think we don't have to look anymore <laughs> because this here deposit is quite large. It goes all the way down to right where it starts making the bend right there. And it's nothing but really nice looking black sand all the way to here. And then for a mile that way, there's nothing. I tell you what, but that was the score. We don't have to spend hours and hours and hours looking around for it. Rigby totally nailed it. I can't thank you enough, buddy. He's my mining partner. All right, let me make the walk back down that way, grab my gear. All right, we made it. Let's see what's in my backpack. <laughs> all right, here is all my gear. Let's take a look. Well, there's my pan and shovel, a little scoop you saw before. Got my jacket, my little camera holder. I've got a tub right here with just a string on it. It goes right over the sluice and hangs off the back. I got a chair right here. That just hangs on that sluice right there. All right. I've got my sluice. This is my Devon Gold VDR sluice system right here. Now I have a cleanup sluice that's three inches wide and three feet long. That works amazing for catching the finest of gold. And I thought, why, why would I use this to clean up? I'll have twice the amount of concentrates as I would with that three inch one. And it works really well. And it occurred to me, why not use it at the beach? It's extremely light. It's, it's got these aluminum angle irons on there to keep it from bending and twisting and warping and all that. So I think that's going to work really well today. I have yet to use it on the beach. That's why we're here. Let's see what else we got in there. Another camera holder. And we have our hose for our pump. Let's see. We have our pump right here. And what else we got in there? And we got this here. 
eco-worthy Life PO4 battery. This thing is extremely light, very light, but it'll run all day. I think that's, uh, I don't know, what is that? 30 amp hours. Now my pump is a three amp pump right here. All right, you see that? Where does it say that? Three amps right there. That means I get one hour of run time for three amps on there. So I'll get roughly 10 hours of service out of that battery. I probably won't be out here running solid for 10 hours. So we'll be in business all day. What else we got in there? We got a little toll and that's it in there. And in here, I've got a speed controller so I can fine tune my sluice water. I've got a, co a container for my concentrates and a frog sticker. All right, he's chomping at the bit to get set up. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna turn all this into a functioning beach production model ASAP. Thanks for all the help, buddy. You did a great job, that's right. All right, we are up and running. I've got a small two and a half gallon pail here to collect my tailings. And as that fills up, I'll just dump out the tailings. That way I get to use the 10 gallons or so of water I have in here over and over and over until I can't use it anymore. It's too dirty or whatever. Now it's important to use a speed controller on a small pump like this, unless you have a pump that you know runs exactly perfect, but I don't. This is my initial run out in the field, and it looks like it's running really nicely right now. I'm gonna start off slow. I'll go up here and grab my little scoop, there's my gold, and I'll take one right from where we were before, and I'll throw it on there, and I'll probably get this stuff wet, but I just wanna see how it's gonna exchange on here, starting out so slow like that. And I can see it's really creeping down there quite slowly. But the vortices and all these little drop riffles in there seem to be exchanging real nicely, not just wash, washing out instantly. And the trick to this mat here, look at the gold in there I can see already. Look at that piece of gold right there. Oh, this is going to be an awesome day, I tell you what. I think we got to turn that up just a little bit more just so I can get these to clear off a little bit. That's my indicator mat for the most part. I'm gonna do that right now just with a little turn of a switch. Turn that up, there we go. And now you can see that they're starting to clear out up in there a little bit more, which is exactly what I want. I wanna know if we're shoveling gold on there. Look at all the gold in there. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, this is really gonna be something. Look at it in there. Oh boy, even right there, there's some. That big scoop might have been a little bit too much for the water that we put on there right away, but I think we're in business now. I, might, I could even turn that up just a little bit more. Here we go. I'll pay attention to that piece of gold right there. And if that baby ain't moving, or none of them other ones that I can see aren't moving, like that one down in there, I can turn this baby up until they do move a little bit. That way we can run more, better, faster. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab another scoop. Now that we have it turned up, right out of that same spot right there, there's some, and that's a pretty decent amount. That's about what I'd put in my gold cube. Now nothing's gonna beat the gold cube as far as production goes. You can just shovel into that darn thing, but I just walked a mile and a half and I'm not carrying that gold cube out here for that. This is gonna work just fine for my purposes and we are definitely catching gold. So let me run a whole bunch through here and we'll see how much we catch in one full five gallon pail. I'll fill that baby up, see what's in it. Video update. We're doing well. You can see, hopefully there's all kinds of gold in that baby. And I'd let it clear out just a little bit because I wanted to show you how much of the gold we're capturing down in some of these areas. And there are some pretty nice looking pieces in there too. Really good sized pieces for the beach. And every one of these all the way down to about 
there. Yep, that's the last one I can see gold in. Let me back up for reference, about halfway down. And I'm sure some of it got down into here and probably some of it went into my tailings pail there. But we are capturing gold like nobody's business. That piece has yet to move. This thing is working exactly the way I'd, I'd hoped it would. We're catching gold like crazy. This is only about halfway full. I haven't even gotten two and a half gallons run yet. I just wanted to see and make sure we were capturing and we are. So now we're gonna keep running and keep gathering. Well, we've got just about two and a half gallons run. So, you know, some of it's boiling over into there, but that's about three quarters full of black sand. So I'm gonna leave this clean out just a little bit, but this is absolutely gonna be something to see. Those things are absolutely filled with gold. And every, every time I look over here, it cleans out just a little bit more and that gold is absolutely just staying put in the bottom of those things. It is loaded, loaded, loaded. And we're doing some testing while I'm doing that. Now I dug a little bit of a trench here because I'm interested to see how, why this deposit and where the deposit is holding onto gold. And I got down to, I don't know, seven or eight inches of this kind of mixed light and heavy material here. And right up on top of that, there's about, oh, I don't know, this layer right here. There's about an inch of really nice solid black sand. And that's where we've been getting some really good gold. I haven't tested down in there yet, but I'm going to do a clean up here real quickly take a look at what's in two and a half gallons and then we're gonna get back at it we'll run this and test at the same time let's take a look All right, now I'm panning away here. That whole sluice kicked out about maybe a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons full of material. And it's it just holds on to the heaviest of the heavy. So this stuff is extremely painstakingly slow to pan out. But I can already tell this is gonna be phenomenal. When I, when I rake it back good and fast like that, you can see all sorts of gold in there. That's for sure. So let me take a good five minutes here and I'll get this cleaned up all the way. And we'll see what's in it for two and a half gallons. <laughs> Rigby nailed it. You nailed it, buddy. Look at this. That's two and a half gallons worth right there. Hundreds and hundreds of pieces. Now this ice cold Lake Superior water floats that gold like crazy. So I was having some issues with gold floating away while I was panning. But there's some really nice looking pieces in there. Look how bright, absolutely bright gold that stuff is. This stuff is really pure and absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to do a little bit of testing in this, in this trench right here. I'll start at the top. I'll take a little test right there. We already know there's gold there. Then I'll take a little bit from there and a little bit from that little bit darker deposit right there. But other than that, we are sitting pretty darn good. There's plenty of material here to work. And we are having an absolute blast out here. The gold is phenomenal. The weather is great. There's not a bug to be had anywhere. It, I mean, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, a couple of commenters asked me, what's better? Uh, gold in the creek or gold at the beach? Well, I'll tell you what. If I could find gold like that in two and a half gallons on any creek that I know of anywhere, I'd go there seven days a week. <laughs> but I don't. This is what, uh, if you luck out and you find the right deposit like we did today, thanks to Rig Bomb over there, uh, you can really do well in a day. And we're gonna do just that. So I'm gonna get to work and grind, grind, grind. Got it. The Rigby tip of the week. <laughs> That's right, buddy. All right, I just now started running and I was doing a little bit of testing in this little trench here I dug before. And there is some gold in there in certain layers here. But the best stuff I found is just skimming the top of this black sand where it start. you can see where it kind of runs up into there and over there it gets pretty thick. But this little whisper of black sand 
right where it meets the rocks right here. It's only about this thick. That stuff is loaded with gold, loaded. So what I've been doing on my sluice, I have this little riffle area up here. I like to call it my indicator mat, all right? Every once in a while, I'll just come over here and smack it like that and get all that gold out of the riffles, okay? This is my capture area down in here. This little riffle area up here means more to me as a tool for indicating whether I'm scooping gold on there or not than it is a capture area. So now I've got all that gold and black sand cleared out of there. I can take a scoop, throw it on there, and I can see scoop by scoop how much gold I'm getting out of any given area in any part of the beach. And this stuff is absolutely fantastic. And there's, I can already see gold showing up in that stuff. It's a little bit hard out here. And, but trust me, there's gold showing up in there all over the place. It's really good. Thanks again, Rigby. All right, let's get back at it. Okay, now just because we're on awesome gold right now, doesn't mean there couldn't be better out there. There is. <laughs> Wait till you see what I just found. Now, a couple of guys in the comments last beach season uh, kind of were steering me in the direction of digging inside of these rocks right here. Now, there's really good gold right in here, and we've been pounding it on here, and this thing is absolutely filling up with gold. But I took their advice again, and I went just down into the rocks, and I got down into this stuff here. All right, there's, my, there's the hole I just dug. And down inside of there, underneath those rocks, there's a layer of sand and on top of that, there's this black sand right here. The gold in there is absolutely fantastic and there's some big pieces too. This is what I just got out of that little test scoop right there. There's, I don't know, 30 pieces in there. And look at that wiry piece right there. That is incredible, incredible. So I think we're gonna shift gears here a little bit. Now this sluice, I could throw pretty good sized pebbles on there and they just wash right on off. But some of them bigger rocks I'll have to pull out of there. Now that this thing's cleaned out, look at the gold showing up in there. Just look at the gold showing up in these capture areas. Oh my god. <laughs> That's crazy, crazy, crazy. So I'm gonna dig a bunch of this stuff up and get the big rocks out of there and see if we can't load that whole thing up with big wiry pieces. Oh my goodness. I knew I should have brought a glass fire down here. Loaded with gold, absolutely loaded. Oh yeah. And those little pebbles roll right on off of there. Even some of the bigger ones. And I can see gold fold, folding over on itself, sinking through that black sand. Some of it's getting, well, I know a lot of it's going right down and past, but I can see as the sand folds over, that there's gold in this stuff for sure. Now I see all those little pebbles, they roll right on off of there. That is awesome, absolutely awesome. It definitely would be better to have a classifier, but I don't have one today and it's still working really well. All right, back at it. All right, we're still grinding away here. I've been noticing some, some pretty darn big pieces fall on that darn sluice. And I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. I'm just pulling all these top rocks off and that first layer of sand, which is about six to seven inches thick, until you start seeing this here. That layer of sand underneath this, this blonde sand right here, this stuff right here is so packed with gold and big pieces and spiders. <laughs> it is absolutely incredible, incredible. I'm seeing some pieces that I don't even hardly see on the darn creek. Look in there, look at how big those pieces are. And by the way, I blew out a fuse on my speed controller, so I'm running full blast, but it's still capturing the gold in those little pockets in there and those drop riffles, and it's still working absolutely flawlessly. So I'm just gonna keep pounding, pounding that stuff on there. I can see gold just falling out of that stuff, that one little handful right there. Oh my gosh, I wish there was more time in the day. We're running a little late. But we're gonna have one heck of a cleanup anyway. Look at the size of the pieces in there. Okay. We are on bucket number seven. And I'm just absolutely amazed at this unit right here. 
I'm so impressed, it's beyond words. I can scoop on there just as fast as I could with a gold cube, 100%. And look at the rocks, they just roll right off of there. I don't even have to classify this stuff. And those vortices are already half empty. Look at the rocks just roll right off. Every once in a while, you might have to scoop one here or there. But for the most part, this stuff is classify free. It catches the gold, it holds on to it, it does not let it go. Once these clear out a little bit, every single one of these is just packed with gold. Look in there. It is absolutely crazy. I can't believe I didn't have this thing five years ago. It's just, there's a whole new world for me. My eyes are open. Well, we've got 10 buckets run. I got all my gear loaded up. Rigby's ready to roll. He's hungry. I'm hungry. And we did absolutely stellar today. Stellar. I can't wait to get this stuff home. I'm gonna run it over my three inch Devon Gold cleanup sluice. And we're gonna have something spectacular to see. So let's make the little four hour ride home and go do it. All right, we're back. That ride didn't take long at all. Especially when you're jamming to awesome tunes. But first things first, I gotta grab a little something out of the fridge of wonder. I really need something out of there. All right, we're gonna do some cleaning up. This is the six inch model that we just used out on the beach. It worked better than I could possibly have imagined it would. We didn't have to do any classifying. The rocks rolled right off of there. It caught the smallest of gold and those great big flat flakes. It was perfect. And now we have the three inch model right here. This baby is just strictly for cleanups and it's built for stuff just like this. I have all these concentrates to go through right here. Plus my snuffer ends. We're about to see some awesome gold. Hang on to your hat. All right, here we go. I got a new fuse in my speed controller. I'll crank the water up a little bit. Get rid of those bubbles. Just like such. And we're ready. Grab one of these spoons and reach across the camera. <laughs> I use this one. And we'll get feeding. There we are. Oh boy. There the <laughs> okay, that's the first, oh, I don't know, half teaspoon or so. I'll try to get the camera down in there just to show you what a half teaspoon is looking like. Lots and lots of gold. I can slow that water down a little bit. Then you'll be able to see it. Look at that. That's half a teaspoon of concentrates. And we got this whole mambo jamma. <laughs> All right, let me feed a whole pile in there and we'll take a look at it. All right, we are running away here and it is looking really good there's tons and tons of gold in there watch that clear out one time <laughs> it is just loaded we're not even i don't know not even a third of the way done yet so i just wanted to quickly go over my patreon for the month of may we have a first second third fourth fifth and each month we have a lottery our first place reward this month is going to be this 2.5 gram giant gold nugget our second place is a 1.57 huge specimen and we have our third fourth fifth all these bags are loaded with gold and delicious pay dirt yum yum and our lottery for the month is this brand new xp metal detectors gold panning premium kit i love those things that's all i use anymore is these xp pans and along with that comes a bag of pay dirt with two full grams of gold in it that's right definitely check out our patreon page in the description box below Man, this is taking forever. All right, we're done. That container is empty. Let me turn this down so we can see something. That's a lot of gold. A lot. And it is packed. Packed up in all these little vortices and drop riffles, etc. So what we're going to do, we're going to dump that in a pan. We're going to pan that all out quickly. It's going to be cool. And the gold, that's a lot. <laughs> now we ran 10 two and a half gallon pails, so basically 25 gallons on the beach. And there's some really nice looking pieces in there. 
Look at those bad, bad boys up in there. They're kind of scattered in there all about. But there's thousands of pieces in there. I couldn't be happier. That sluice changes everything in my beach mining life. And that's how you get her done. We brought some new equipment out there. That six inch VDR sluice worked flawlessly. I'm so happy. Uh, Rigby put us right on the spot. First spot of the day and we nailed it. Totally nailed it. I couldn't be happier for our first trip out in 2022. And plenty more to come. So until the next episode, like, share, subscribe. Please do leave a comment. It helps build our channel. And definitely check out our Patreon page in the description box below. Flower Gold Wizards, oh. Got it.